Okay, so for today, we will have a partnership liquidation. Although I have already sent you the soft copy of the uh, lesson. So this is the discussion for those who haven't uh, understand yet the full context of the liquidation. So liquidation, this is the last step in the partnership the partnership life, diba? So we start with partnership formation. We're in, we are accounting for the investments, like how should we record the investments if it is a non-cash investment? How should we record the investment if there will be bonus? Uh, there is bonus method na uh, gagamitin natin or uh, what uh, should be the steps to be taken account or to be to to be taken when. Uh, when two individuals join to form a partnership or when what there is a, a sole proprietorship and an individual okay so that is under partnership formation after the partnership formation or once the partnership is already formed so now we have the partnership operations or the accounting for the division of profits and losses so in partnership operation the main focus of the accounting is how will the partners divide their, their profits and their losses. So it could be equally, it could be uh, in the form of ratio or percentage or decimal or fraction. It could also be uh, the former with some allowance to salaries for the time devoted to the business. Uh, it could also be, uh, uh, bonus could also be included as well as interest for their uh, capital so the partnership continues to operate therefore the uh, partnership operate accounting for partnership operation will stand still but then there are some changes in the partnership there will uh, there are some uh, inevitable events that will lead the partnership into uh, dissolution so in partnership dissolution, we are accounting for the change in the relationship between the partners. So, pwedeng may madagdag na partner, pwedeng may mawala na partner. Okay? So, there could be uh, accounting for dissolution with bonus method or revaluation method. And we already have a video for that. Now, sometimes, uh, sometimes the change in the relationship is uh, already uh, have gone too far. So, leads to liquidation or sometimes it's not because there was a change in the relationship but the business is already failing or sometimes it's just the partners want to uh, liquidate so in liquidation we are actually winding up we are terminating the business okay we are winding up the affairs of the business so as to uh, return all the capital left in the partnership to the partners personal Packets, okay, so there are two types of liquidation. The first type of liquidation is our lump sum liquidation, wherein the processes take place uh, just once, okay. So, kung baga, pag pagaginawa yung step na to, todo agad, so full agad, 100% agad. Pero pag sinabi naman natin na installment, ibig sabihin, medyo mas matagal ito kaysa din sa lump sum kasi. Kung ano yung step, hindi pa, hindi naman kailangan na lahat ay i, uh, like, let's say for example, the, the first step of the liquidation is the realization. So, under lump sum, all of the non-cash assets will be sold in a single transaction or in a, in a yes, it's a single transaction. Well, in installment, it could be just 40% or 20% or just a portion of the non-cash assets that will be sold and then they can uh, proceed to the next steps of the liquidation and then come back to realization again. So, kaya siya tinawag na installment liquidation. But for today, we will discuss first lump sum liquidation. So, how does it work? Actually, the liquidation process okay, is already is only compose of two main steps. The first one is the realization and the second one is the distribution of cash. It just so happened that under distribution of cash, there will be uh, 
there will be order of priority. Kaya yung iba, no, sa ibang book, yung distribution of cash, hinahati-hati pa niya into different steps. So in the realization, this is the conversion of your non-cash assets into cash. So dahil nga we are already uh, terminating the business, so we are already terminating the, the partnership, so what we do first is to convert all of our non-cash assets into cash para mas madali na lang para pag lahat ng asset natin ay cash na, bayad na lang tayo ng bayad hanggang sa matapos na yung kailangan nating bayaran at yung matitira ay mabigay sa mga partners. Pagdating kasi ng liquidation, actually, no, so marami tayong mga klase ng assets na naaral, but pagdating ng liquidation, the assets are just classified into two main groups, the cash and the non-cash assets. Kasi nga, ang mahalaga na naman dito is mabalik na natin at maliquidate na natin yung pera natin. And we know na uh, pagdating ng liquidation, cash talaga yung, alam nyo naman, di ba, pinaka-liquid talaga yung cash. So, the non-cash assets are sold and converted into cash. So, after conversion of these non-cash assets into cash, of course, we will now distribute the cash. So, this is the first step and this is the second step. But inside the first steps are numerous transactions that could happen. Okay. So, under realization, syempre, no, we are selling our assets. So, you could sell your asset in three ways. It could be equal to book value. Okay? It could be more than the book value. And it could be less than the book value. So, of course, alam natin na kapag binenta natin siya equal to its book value, ibig sabihin niyan, wala tayong gain, wala rin tayong loss. Okay? Pag sinabi naman natin na binenta natin siya at above book value, let's say for example, that our non-cash asset is 700, na benta natin siya ng 900, we know that we have what we call gain. On the other hand, no, pag naman na benta natin yung 700 ng 500 lang, alam natin na nalugi tayo ng 200. So kapag ka naman ganito, nagkakaroon tayo ng loss. So, kung meron tayong gain or meron tayong loss, hindi pa tayo makakaproceed agad sa distribution of cash. So, before that, no, i-close muna natin yung gain tsaka yung loss natin sa ating mga partners. Okay, using their profit and loss ratio. Kasi nga, profit and loss din yan. So, we are using profit and loss ratio. Okay? So, other than the conversion of the non-cash asset into cash, also, uh, bago tayo mag-distribute ng cash, there are uh, some things that we pay, or, yes, now there are some things that we pay na hindi talaga nakabudget sa atin, like, unrecorded liability. So, syempre, itong cash natin na yan, di ba, or yung assets natin, from the equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Ibig sabihin, yung asset natin ay kasha lang sa liabilities na babayaran natin, tsaka sa equity na ibabalik natin sa ating mga partners. So, now, what happens when there are unrecorded liabilities or unexpected expenses, like liquidation expenses? Halimbawa, ito, nabenta mo ng ganito, pero para mabenta mo siya ng half million or, ayan, ng 500,000, bago ka pa mag-incur ng loss na ganyan, nagbayad ka pa ng broker na hindi mo, sa hindi mo inaasahang na, na sa so, hindi mo inaasahang pagkakataon ay medyo malaki pa yung sa broker, 10% pa. So, nagkakaroon pa tayo ng additional na loss. So, dahil mga hindi nga sila nakabudget sa ating asset, so ano nangyayari? Hindi naman pwedeng i-minus natin sila sa liability. Dahil idadagdag sila dito sa liability, pero wala namang galaw yung asset, what happens? Itong ating equity ay kailangan natin bawasan. Ibig sabihin, if there are unreported liabilities, Aside from loss, okay, ha? unreported liabilities, and we have unexpected expenses or unanticipated expenses. So, ito rin ay kinoclose din natin sa ating partner's capital account using their profit and loss ratio. Okay? So, 
Let's have an example yung nandun sa module na uh, sinet ko sa inyo. Okay. So, bagay lang natin. Diyan, meron tayong PUPACC partnership. No? As far as I can remember. So, we have partners BSA and BSMA. With capital of uh, 300,000 and 460,000. The liabilities amounted to 230 and the assets meron tayong cash baliktad, <laughs> baliktad no? yan yung nag-even lang naman yan basta alam nyo yung tamang gagawin wala tayong problema cash na 70 and non cash na 920 yan. so pag tinotan nyo yan kaya nyo yan na 990 Okay. So, halimbawa, uh, ayan. So, sabi nga natin, pagdating dito sa realization, no? So, we are converting the non-cash asset into cash. So, on the first example, it was sold at above book value. For how much was it sold? Ito nga natin dito sa ginawa natin. Okay, so assume equal muna pala natin. So, these non-cash assets were sold at the same, 920. So, we have here cash, non-cash asset, liabilities, uh, BSA, and BSMA. So, this is our statement of partnership liquidation. We have here 70, 920, 230, 300, and 400. 16. Okay? Assuming that it was sold equal to its book value, so, tatanggal mo na yung cash mo kasi nga, binenta mo na to, Okay? So, just take note of this reminder na kahit magkano mo itong mabenta, as long as ito yung binenta mo, tatanggalin mo to, So, yung tatanggalin mo yung buong amount na to, yung buong NCA mo or buong non-cash asset mo ay binenta mo na. Okay? Kasi ang common mistake dito, kung magkano yung mabenta, himbawa, na benta ng 700. Ang tinatanggal lang dito, 700. That is wrong. No? Kasi kung tatanggalin mo dyan 700, it is, it is assumed that there is still 220 worth of asset where in fact, wala na. Kasi nga, nalugin na natin yun. So, tanggalin lang natin siya, no? is, dahil nga nasa lump sum naman tayo, ibig sabihin, nung nag-realize tayo, nirealize natin agad lahat. Kasi hindi na tayo uulit pa ng cycle. So, we have here 920. Nabenta natin to ng 920. Okay? So, this is 990, 0, 230, 300, and 460. Okay? So, tapos na ang ating realization. There was no gain nor loss. Ibig sabihin, wala tayong kailangang i-close sa capital balances natin. Wala rin sinabi ang recorded liabilities and unanticipated or unexpected expenses. Therefore, wala na tayong ibabawas. Now, Pagdating natin ng step 2, the distribution of cash. So, ito na yan. Kanina dapat unang mapunta yung cash. So, of course, kung meron man tayong uh, pagbibigyan ng cash, so, bayad muna natin dito sa, kung meron ba, no? So, una, syempre, yung mga priorities natin. Ano ba yung mga priorities muna na bayaran natin? Ito yung mga under, uh, unexpected losses and expenses. Okay? Kasi wala yan dito. So, pag nagkaroon ng ganon, minus ka ng cash, then minus mo sa kanilang dalawa. Kasi sabi ko nga, hindi mo lang pwedeng i-minus dito yun. Actually, dinadagdag na natin, pero i-diretsyo na natin, kasi idagdag natin dyan, i-minus na lang natin dito sa ating partners. Okay? After, kung wala naman tayong uh, obligation, na katulad ng sinabi ko na unexpected losses or unexpected expenses, we can now proceed to paying the outside creditors. Actually, sa ibang book, no, or sa mga book, yung priorities na to, kasama na siya dito sa, sinasa, sa tinatawag na outside creditors. But gusto ko lang kasing i-emphasize, no, na ito kasing creditors na to, 
ito yung nakarecord dito sa atin. Ibig sabihin, ito yung liabilities na babayaran natin. Now, after paying the outside creditors, if there are any inside creditors, o yung mga loan from our partners, no? so possible kasi yun, bawa partnership, may kailangan bayaran, walang kasi partnership, nandun si partner, so ang ginawa ni partner, pinaluwalan niya, yung babayaran dapat ni partnership, so ng kanyang sariling pera, ibig sabihin, si partnership ay magkakaroon ng utang sa kanya, so magkakaroon ngayon ang tinatawag na, Loans payable si partnership. Okay? So, inside creditor. Then, after the inside creditor, pagbayad na yung uh, pautang, kung meron man, so, sumunod naman natin babayaran, sumunod natin bibigyan ng cash ay yung ating uh, capital. No? Babalik natin yung capital, then kung meron share in profit, siya yung pinakahuling makakakuha. Okay? So, ito yung priority natin, no? So, this is the order. It should be the first, the priorities, unexpected losses, and unexpected expenses. Then, we have the outside creditors, or yung mga liabilities na listed dito. Then, we have the inside creditors, or yung mga partners na may pautang kay partnership. Ibig sabihin, ang hahanapin nyo kay partnership ay yung kanyang liability. Liability ni partnership kay partner. And then, we have the capital and then the share in profits. Okay? Kung meron nang matitira. So, pagdating dito, wala tayong priority. Meron tayo outside creditor. Bayaran muna natin. 230. So, this will be 760. Tama ba? 760. This is 0, 0, 300, and 460. Since the, there is no profit, wala ding inside creditor. Ano? Capital. So, 760, pamigay na natin sa mga partners, 300,000 and 460,000 here. So, ito na ibibigay natin sa kanila. After that, the partnership is already liquidated. Paano na sabi na part partnership is already liquidated? Because the balances of each accounts in the partnership books are already brought back to zero. Okay. Now, what happens if the asset was not sold? to an amount equal to its book value. No? So, let's say, for example, that the asset was sold at a profit or it was sold at a loss. Okay? So, let's see here. Okay. Assuming that the assets, instead of uh, being sold at uh, 900 20,000 or equal to its book value, it was sold at 1 million pesos. So, same time ng given, we have cash na 70, ng cash asset na 920, liab na 230, then capital 300 and 460. Nagbenta tayo ng cash. Step 1, realization. So, binenta natin itong buo. Ibig sabihin, tanggalin natin ng buo. Magkano ang nareceive natin cash? Sabi natin, binenta natin ng 1 million. Therefore, meron tayo, kung titignan natin yung ating yan, ating uh, equation, so, equity assets, liabilities and equity, alam natin na meron tong positive 80. Therefore, Hatiin natin positive 80. As far as I can remember, yung hatian natin ay 40 is to 60. Uh, no, 35 is to 65. No? 35. And 65. So, 80, magkana, magkana yung magiging tubo para kay, ay magiging uh, profit para kay BSA. So, we have 80,000 multiplied by 35%. So, meron tayong 28,000. Then, 80 na, na gain times 65%, we have 52,000. Therefore, after the realization, the balances of the accounts will be 1,070,000. This is already zero. You have 230, 328, and 512. Okay? Wala tayong priorities. 
Pero meron tayong outside creditors. So, bayaran na natin si outside creditors. So, tanggalin na natin yung utang natin sa kanya. Tanggalin din natin sa cash. Okay? Therefore, from 1,070, it will now become how much? 840. Zero is already zero. 328 and 512. So, wala tayong inside creditors. Nakapital na tayo. So, minus 328, bayaran na natin. Minus 512. No? So, total is 840. Wala na tayong natitirang cash. Therefore, this will be 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0. The partnership is already liquidated. So, ibig sabihin, magkami na-receive ni BSA on the last distribution or at the end of the liquidation. So, ang na-receive nga ay 328 and 512 for BSMA. Okay? Now, assuming that instead of being sold at a profit, the non-cash assets were sold at a loss. Ibig sabihin, mas mababa yung selling price kaysa sa ating book value. Okay. So, your cash, non-cash asset, liabilities, BSA, with 35% and DSMA with, 40, with 65% okay. 70, 920, 230, 300 and 460 Okay, Shumi, kanina 1 million natin nabenta, ngayon 800,000 na lang Ibig sabihin, magkano tatanggalin natin dito sa ating non-cash Assets. Binenta mo bang buo? Yes. Kasi lang sa liquidation tayo. Ibig sabihin, tanggalin mo ang buo. Regardless kung magkano yung marireceive mo. Okay? So, 800. Sabihin, 800 lang papasok na cash sa'yo. Okay? So, kung makikita ninyo, pag hinati ninyo yung equation, the asset has a negative 120. Therefore, kailangan magkaroon din ng negative 120 on the part of the liabilities and the equity pero hindi ka naman pwedeng magbawas sa liabilities therefore sa equity mo lang ibabawas okay so we have loss of magkano so 800 minus 920 there is a loss of 120 so 120 multiplied by 35% therefore the share in the loss is 42,000 tama Okay, so we have 42,000 negative, kasi nga, loss yan. And this is 78,000 negative. So your cash will be 870. You will now have zero balance for your non-cash assets. Your liability is still 230. You haven't paid anything yet. Nasa step 1 pa lang tayo. This is 258. And this is 300, magkano ito? 400 minus 18. So, 382. Okay. So, done with the realization and the distribution of gains and losses. Gains or losses, no? Now, let's go to step 2. Do we have any priority payments? Wala. Wala tayong kailangan bigay na priority payments. Then, sumunod, meron tayong outside creditors. Meron, di ba? So, bayaran muna natin. So, tanggalin na natin yung utang natin kasi babayaran na natin. Okay? So, the balances, this will now become 640. Zero here, zero here. 258, 382. Okay? Pag pinagsama mo yan, ang total nila ay 640. 40. Therefore, the last step, wala naman tayong inside creditors. So, ibigay na natin ang kanilang capital. Okay. Then, 
Kung meron man, share in profit. Pero dito wala. Okay. So, bigyan natin. Tanggalin natin yung buong 640 kasi bibigyan natin sa kanila. Minus 258 minus 308. Okay. Therefore, 0,0,0,0,0 The partnership is now liquidated. Okay. Now, there are some some uh there are uh some problems okay there are some problems that the losses covers the whole capital of a partner ibig sabihin the capital of the partner cannot absorb the full loss that is allocated to him okay so dahil halimbawa kulang na yan let's say this is 420 eh ang capital niya ay 300 lang. Ibig sabihin, lugi, kulang pa yung capital niya ng 120. So, what happens, okay, when the loss is excessive, that it leads to capital deficiency of a partner. Okay. So, meron tayong tatlong remedy na ginagamit natin in, or, uh, in the order of priority. So, the remedy one, Okay. What if there are or there is excessive loss? Excessive loss na naglilid sa capital deficiency. Ito yan. Deficiency. Okay. So first one, kung meron kang, meron siyang pautang sa'yo, no? No? So, exercise the right of offset. Ano ibig sabihin ng right of offset? So, let's say for example, si BSA Corporation, or si, B, ay, si BSA Corporation, si partner BSA ay merong loans receivable from the partnership. Ibig sabihin, on the part of the partnership, it is a loans payable. So, paano nga ulit natin malalaman kung loans receivable or loans payable? Nakalagay sa module. Okay? Technique number one, or una mong observation number one, if the balance sheet is written, no, or is presented in an account form, ito kasi baliktad to eh. Pag sinabi mo account form, no, yung asset ay yung nandito, the liabilities and equity nandito. Parang yan, kung i-arrange natin yung kanina, cash of 70, ng cash asset of 920, then nandito na yung liabilities of 230, BSA capital of 300, and BSMA capital of 460. Ibig sabihin, account form, kung nakalagay siya sa T-account, ito ang asset with the normal side of debit, ito ang ating liabilities and equity with the normal side of credit. Okay, nasa left, nasa right. So, kapag gagawin yan, paano mo malalaman kung meron kang kung ang loan ba ay loans payable or loans receivable? Kasi sa karamihan ng mga problem, nakalagay lang ganyan, kung meron man loan. BSA loan, so hindi nakalagay kung loans payable or loans receivable. So, what are you gonna determine? Of course, kung nakaganito, madali, no? Kung nakita mong nandito siya sa side ng mga asset, ibig sabihin, That is a loans receivable of the company or of the partnership. Ibig sabihin, si partnership ang may pautang at ang may utang ay si partner. Okay? Pero pag naman halimbawa itong account na ganito, ay nakita mo dito after ng liabilities or before ng liabilities pero nasa kanan ng isang balance sheet na nakapresent din ang account form, ibig sabihin, this is a liability of the partnership to the partner. Okay? Ibig sabihin, si partner yung may pautang. So, what happens kapag may pautang si partner? So, kung kulang si partner, katulad nun ng kung yung sinasabi ko kanina, assuming, this is a capital of a partner, 300, but the share in the loss is 420. Ibig sabihin, his capital is not enough to cover his share in the loss. Dahil kulang siya ng 120, no? sana, sana nag-i-gets nyo kay 
hindi tayo full na example. No? So, 120, kung halimbawa meron siyang pautang. So, BSA yan naman ito. BSA loan. At ito ay pautang niya kay partnership. Ibig sabihin, kung halimbawa meron itong 120, okay? Tama, 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 tama. 120, So, anong gagawin? I-offset natin yung loss niya gamit yung kanyang pautang. Parang ganito. Alugi pa ako ng 120, kulang yung capital ko. Sige, partnership, bayaran mo muna yung utang mo sa akin para mabayaran ko yung share ko sa loss. So, syempre, pag binayaran na yan ni partnership, tatanggalin niya na dito sa loan account. So, normally, yung gagawin dapat yan, di ba, kapag ka tayo nagbabayad ng utang, ang ginagawa natin, we debit the loans payable account or the whatever payable account, then we credit cash. Eh, kaso sabi niya, kaya niya yung sinisingil dahil ano, para makover yung kanyang loss. So, parang ang mangyayari niyan, debit ka ng payable, credit ka ng cash. Ganyan sana. Pero sabi niya, itong cash na makukuha niya, no, na mababawi niya galing sa pautang niya kay partnership, ay i-invest niya ulit para makover yung loss niya. Ibig sabihin, debit ng cash, credit ng capital. Kaya pagdating ng partnership liquidation, isang debit dito, ay isang debit dito, isang credit, isang debit dito, isang credit dito, so ito na lang yung natitira, debit payable and credit capital. Ibig sabihin, i-direct na natin dito sa kanya ng capital account. So, wala na siyang pautang, wala na rin siyang utang na kailangang i-cover. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na right of offset. Now, paano if the right of offset is not available, ibig sabihin wala siyang pautang pero may negative siya dito, or meron nga siyang pautang pero hindi enough. Let's say, ang pautang niya ay 80. So, meron naman, di ba? So, exercise the right of offset. Tanggalin natin yung loan na 80. Ilagay natin sa capital niya. What happens? Wala ng loan. Pero meron pa rin siyang utang na 40. So, kulang pa rin. So, the right of offset have already been exercised. Second thing is, mag magkaroon siya ng additional investment. Okay? So, paano ngayon kung halimbawa... Hindi siya solvent. Ano ba sabi na solvent? Ibig sabihin, aside from the partnership assets, yung personal assets ng isang partner ay mas malaki kaysa sa kanyang personal na liability. Ibig sabihin nun, siya ay solvent at may kakayahan siya na magdagdag ng additional cash kung kinakailangan katulad sa sitwasyon na to. So, ito ay kung solvent na siya. Okay? Halimbawa, ang solvency. Let's see, for example, that the solvency is already at, is only at 20,000. Ibig sabihin, ang sobra lang niya ay 20,000. So, mag-add man siya ng 20 dito at mag-add siya ng 20 sa cash, no? meron pa rin siya negative. 20. Okay? O kung halimbawa na hindi siya solvent, hindi possible ang remedy number 2. So, if the remedy number 2 is either insufficient or inavailable, or unavailable, tawag sa English na yun, or unavailable, ibig sabihin kasi insolvent siya, then you proceed to the last remedy. The last remedy is what you call capital or loss absorption. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin, kung meron mang partner na merong positive balance na kapit ng kapital, at solvent, no? Or solvent partner. Siya na yung mag invest or siya na yung mag-cover ng loss. Bakit ma'am, hindi ba ma'am magiging uh, unfair yon on the part of the uh, partner na nag-absorb? So, halimbawa ito, si BSA kulang pa ng 20. So, ang gagawin niyan, si BSMA, maglalagay siya ng additional na cash. So, add siya ng cash na 20, then dadagdagan niya ng 20, hindi sa capital niya, kung hindi, sa capital ni BSA, para ito ay maging 
zero at ma eliminate yung kanyang deficiency. So, hindi naman siya sobrang lugi, no? So, kung baga, at first hand or at first look, lugi siya. Pero ang mangyayari din naman kasi niyan, parang pinaluwalan niya lang. If ever that uh, BSA uh, partner, BSA is uh, already capable of paying, so magiging personal liability niya yun, guy. BSMA. Okay? So, ito yung ating gagawin kapag meron tayong excessive loss. Okay? Sabihin, sobra-sobra yung loss na naglilid sa capital deficiency or yung negative capital. Ito yung tinatawag natin na deficient capital. Okay? So, yun yung gagawin natin. So, now, syempre, alam ko naman na pinakinggan niyo yung lesson na to dahil akala nyo, no, ito na yung mismong shortcut. Kaya, ngayon, ibibigay ko na talaga yung shortcut. So, pwede ba ma'am na makamalaman namin kung magkano yung naging loss or magkano yung naging uh, distribution to the partners even without doing the full statement of liquidation? The answer is yes. No? So, pwede naman hindi gawin yung buong liquidation na yan. Pero actually, naman sobrang shortcut nito. Parang may ini-eliminate lang din tayo na part. So, when doing the shortcut, Okay? So, when doing the shortcut, the first thing that you need to do is to get the net interest. What do you mean by the net interest? So, the net interest of a partner in a partnership is the sum or the net amount of its capital and its loan. So, halimbawa, kung ito ang merong BSA loan dito na 140, halimbawa ito ayaw na lang. Jok, 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 jok. Balik ko ba ko? So, 144. Para lang magpantay. So, magandang. Tama na ba? 30. This is 30 din ako. Bula na. Okay. This is 1130. This is also 1130. Okay. So, alam mo ba si BSA ay merong loan dito? Ibig sabihin, at pwede dito pala makikita mo na pabawa siya kasi hindi sila magkalinya eh. No? So, 300 minus 140, ang net interest ni BSA ay 160. Ayun yung tinatawag natin na net interest. So, kung meron mang loans, no? inenet natin dito. So, kapag ka nandito yung loan sa side ni liability, iya-add natin. Kasi nga, parang silang nasa credit. Ibig sabihin, no? so, magkasama sila. Pero kung halimbawa ay isa nasa debit, so, i-deduct naman natin siya. So, that is how you get the net interest. So, isolve natin yung mga problem na nakita natin kanina. Okay? So, the net interest, so, dito na tayo magisimula. Ibig sabihin, naka-embed naka na dito sa process na to yung ating remedy number 2, which is, ay, remedy number 1, which is the right of offset. So, we have the BSA, BSMA, and then the total. Okay? So, meron tayo 300 and 460. Hindi naman natin diniscuss yung may loan. Kaya yung nabahalang mag-aral nun. Sana nagets yung discussion kanina. So, the total capital is 760. Or the total interest no, is 760. Now, para mag-uho mo lang yung table na to, no, eto na yung mismong cash. So, ano lang ba yung mababawas sa cash? Una, liability. Pero, syempre, alam naman natin na sa ating equation, assets equal to liabilities plus equity, no? so, meron namang nakaalap kay liability. And when we are paying liability, the entry is simply debit liability and credit cash. Hindi naman gumagalaw ang ating net interest. Ibig sabihin, on the per payment of liability, may be eliminated already in this type of solution. Okay? Then we have here the Loss. So, ano lang ba yung nababawas natin kay liability? So, we, di ba we have loss on realization, we have unexpected losses, unexpected expenses, o yung mga expenses and liabilities na hindi natin naka-record dito. Okay? Hindi natin na-anticipate na makapasok dito at walang nakaalat na asset. So, yun yung ating mga loss dito. Okay? Pero, more likely, hindi pa yung lumalabas under lump sum. So, loss on realization. So, katulad kanina, nabenta, no? 
Ano kami yung scenario A natin? 920 yung selling price. Ibig sabihin, no gain or loss. Sabihin, walang gain or loss. Ito yung gain or loss natin, nasa total. Okay? This is 35. This is 65. Dahil walang gain or loss, ibig sabihin, ang total cash na pinamigay natin ay 760. Tama, di ba? Balikan niyo yung case 1 natin kanina. Ito yung pinamigay natin pera. At dahil wala naman loss na ating ilis sa kanila, so ibababa lang natin, 300 and 460, ibig sabihin, ito yung na-receive ng bawat isa at the end of liquidation. And you may check your notes, ito nga talaga yun. Okay? Ito yung ginawa natin kanina. Okay. Same lang naman yung interest nila, wala tayong binago sa given kanina, except that, on case B, instead of being sold at 920, the selling price was 1 million pesos. And there is a gain of 80,000. So, dahil nagkaroon ng gain, ito pa, loss or gain. Ba't ko tinanggalan ng karapatan ng karapatan? So, meron pa yung gain dito na 80. So, yung 80 na yun ay yung total gain natin. Paano nga kinukuha yung gain or loss? Selling price minus book value of asset sold. This is your gain or loss. Okay? Ibig sabihin, ang total na pinabigay natin ay 840. Okay? So, 80 yung ating gain. Hatiin natin sa profit and loss ratio. Kasi nga, gain or loss yun. Or profit and loss yun. Kaya, gamitin natin ito. So, this is, magkano ito? 80 times 35. 28. And this is, 52. Okay? Kaya ang mauwi ni BSA ay 328 at kay BSMA 512. At ito din yung nakuha natin kanina. Okay? Itong ito din yung nakuha natin kanina sa case B. Sa case C naman natin, it was sold at 800,000 thereby incurring a loss of 120,000. Okay? So tingnan natin kung pareho ba talaga tayo nang makukuha. So, nagkaroon naman yan ng Loss. So, meron kang loss dito na 120 based on your loss on realization. Dahil wala ka naman ito. No? Pag meron ka niyan, idagdag mo dito. Okay, 120. Therefore, ang ipinamigay natin ay may total na 640. So, 120. Hatiin lang natin ulit sa kanilang dalawa. This is 52. Tama ba? And this is is it, is it wrong? This is 42. And this is 78. So, negative. Dahil ang inatin natin ay loss. Ibig sabihin, si BSA ay may na-receive na 258. At si BSMA ay may na-receive na 382. At eto din, sa pagkatatanda ko, yung kaninang nakuha natin sa long cut na ginamit natin. Kung saan, binuo natin yung process ng liquidation. So, that is how you do the shortcut. So, now, there are plenty of problems that we have uh, in example sa books and sa module na binigit sa inyo, meron din yung merong may loans, merong gumamit, gumamit ng tatlong remedy. You may try this, okay? Basta tandaan lang, the net interest, okay? Ito yung pinagsamang capital and loan. Anong tatandaan? Kapag ayan ay asset, yung loan, no? asset of the company, ibig sabihin, i-deduct natin. Bakit din i-deduct? Kasi utang iyan ni partnership. Dahil nga receivable yan ni partnership. Ay, utang iyan ni partner. Dahil nga receivable yan, asset yan. No? Ni partnership, ibig sabihin, para makuha mo yung interest mo, kung 300 man yan, no? eh meron naman pa receivable sa'yo si Si partnership ng 140, ibig sabihin, ang, kaya, ang pwede mo na lang talagang kunin sa partnership ay 160. So, may utang ka pala sa kanya. So, huwag mo kunin yung buong to. Bayad ka ng utang, okay? Kung ikaw naman yung may pautang, halimbawa nandito naman yung 140 on the credit side, ibig sabihin, 300 na yung capital, tsaka yung pautang mo kay partnership, singilin mo na. So, idadagdag mo, okay? 
Kaya kapag yan ay liability, okay, yung loan natin ay na-determine mo as liability, ayan ay ina-add natin para makuha ang net interest. Okay? So, dito, account form lang nabangit ko kanina. Kapag ka naman report form kung saan, ito ang, ito ang ating uh, pagkakasunod-sunod ng asset, no? para kang nagbabasa ng report, dire-diretso, asset, liabilities, then equity. Pagka yung loan, nakita mo nandito, sabihin, after ng cash, tsaka ng non-cash, asset, nandito yung loan. Bago yung term na liability, ibig sabihin, yan ay considered as asset. Pero kung halimbawa yung loan, nakita mo, sa gitna ng liabilities, tsaka ng equity. Okay? So, this is already a liability. So, that is how you determine Uh, if the partner's loan or uh, the, the, tama, the partner's loan is an asset or a liability. So, see you on next video. Thank you.